I'm here in Atlanta. I'm giving a talk tomorrow morning at a conference called The Gathering for Gardener, which is a conference about sort of mathematical puzzles, mathematical games, uh, recreational mathematics, and also kind of mathematical objects. So I hope they'll uh, appreciate me talking a little bit about Gerber's great graphical gizmos. I got six minutes for my talk and I wanted to practice it, make sure I can actually do it in six minutes. So here goes. Um, I want to talk about three different graphical computing instruments that were invented by H. Joseph Gerber. Uh, he invented these in the 40s. Here's a picture of uh, Joe Gerber with another famous inventor. Um, these are graphical data analysis tools. The idea is these are for analyzing data which is only on paper, data which uh, doesn't exist in any other form. Um, it's only graphical and so you have to analyze it by graphical means. These were invented in the 40s but marketed in the 50s. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the Gerber variable scale. There's Joe Gerber with a, the variable scale. This was his flagship product. It looks like that. It's about the size of an ordinary ruler. Um, but it stretches. That's the interesting thing about the Gerber variable scale. It's a stretchable ruler, which to me is a, is a crazy idea just because a ruler, the whole point of it is that it, it has a specific distance. It, do, it doesn't stretch, but this, the variable scale is a stretchable ruler. This is a picture of the original variable scale, which Joe Gerber made out of the uh, elastic in his pajama pants. He invented this while he was a student at RIT. Um, trying to, he created it to help him solve homework problems. Um, here's a basic thing you can do with the variable scale. If you're looking at a graph where the, um, the scale markings are too widely spaced and you want to eyeball a point that's in between the two scale markings, rather than just estimating the location of that point, you can stretch the variable scale markings to match the markings that you have on the paper. And then the, um, the stretchable subdivisions will be exactly where you want them to be. And you can read uh, points that are in between the existing subdivisions on your paper. That's pretty cute, right? Uh, here's another similar trick you can do if you have some kind of uh, figure on the paper and you want to divide it into equal portions. Here I'm dividing a segment into 10 equal pieces. All you do is stretch the variable scale to that length and then mark off your, uh, your markings, right? Here's another one. Actually, the variable scale, if you look closely, you can see there's a few different um, marked scales on the device itself. One of them is a logarithmic scale, and there's a procedure by which you can make out um, evenly spaced logarithmic markings rather than linear markings. So you can do some pretty fancy stuff with this the uh, Gerber variable scale. Here's the second one. This is sort of a, a deluxe and, in my opinion, somewhat ridiculous version of the variable scale called the graph analog. It has a variable scale on the top, um, but otherwise it has 18 individual scales that let you do all kinds of obscure and strange other graphical tricks. So I'm just, I'm just going to do one example here. There's a scale for uh, logarithms, of course, but there's also a, um, a power scale. Um, and you can use this to make what they call a square scale. So at the bottom you see um, individual markings 1 to 10 and what the markings on the top represent the squares of the values on the scale below. So you can see like the 10 up top is slightly to the right of the 3 on the bottom. That's because 10 is slightly more than 3 squared. Very strange. Lots of weird tricks you can do like that using all those other scales on the graph analog. Uh, and here's my last um, invention of Joe Gerber's I want to show you. It's called the derivimeter. This is an instrument for measuring the derivative of a curve. Uh, what you do is you lay it down on top of a curve on paper and you sort of swivel the bottom of it there um, to line this crossbar up uh, as the tangent of the curve. So you swivel it until the crossbar is tangent to your curve on the paper and then it has this pointer that sticks out perpendicularly and it points out the slope. So it, that tells you the derivative at that point. Um, really, this is just some kind of elaborate protractor, but I haven't shown you the best part. So the best part is this. Lining up that crossbar with the tangent can be tricky to just eyeball the tangent. Here's the, here's the great thing. It has these knobs on it which bend the crossbar. And so you 
fine tune, you tweak the little knobs there to make that bar match exactly your curve. And you can see as I'm turning the knobs, the pointer is moving accordingly, and it gives you actually quite an accurate reading of what the slope is at that particular point. I would say these tools are really uh, quite good at what they do. Those operations, they're fairly specific operations that I outlined there that in my opinion, there are not really modern tools that do this better, right? Um, essentially, the entire enterprise has been made obsolete by, uh, by computers. But if you actually had to divide lengths on paper into equal segments or whatever, the variable scale is still uh, maybe the best way uh, to do that and still a lot of fun. I thought I'll just leave you with one more picture. Uh, Joe Gerber also invented something he called the Equameter. This is a graphical device for measuring Taylor series and Fourier series of a curve drawn on paper. Pretty amazing, pretty ambitious uh, device there. Unfortunately, I don't have time to tell you about it, so maybe next time. All right, thanks for your attention. How'd I do?